This large frog farm is found in Malaysia. The owner regularly breeds about 35,000 frogs for consumption. The tropical heat and humidity are favorable. The site is organized in a series of small enclosures. The frogs are protected against their predators by nets and circuits for water flow are essential. A couple of breeders have laid eggs with their jelly-like mass. The adults have been quickly taken away from the enclosures because cannibalism is common there. The species used here is the American bullfrog, which was imported, but some local Asian bullfrogs also are bred on the farm. The eggs quickly turn into tadpoles, which can be grown easily as they still live underwater. There must be running as well as very oxygenated water in the pools, which can be obtained simply by leaving a tap open. At this stage, a part of each enclosure must be kept in the shade, as well as in some space out of water. The young frogs live in groups and an unexpected noise is enough to make them jump. The frogs raised in this farm can be found at the market of the capital, Kuala Lumpur. Every day you'll see at least one frog seller there with an extremely simple stall. He's attracting the customer's attention by emptying his sack into a small cage. An order has been placed and the frogs are knocked senseless before weighing and bleeding. Once they're prepared, the legs are cut off. In Madagascar, frog consumption is quite common and everybody likes eating them. You can see Antananarivo here, its typical hills and the Queen's Palace, as well as large places underwater in the wet season, which gives this the image of a rice field right in the city. The big market in Zuma is well known, and we're able to follow a Madagascaran lover of frogs. Unfortunately, the frogs have been gathered in the wild without any control, although the ministry gives a lot of advice and even publishes a handbook for the frog breeders. However, our frog lover chose his goods and clinched a deal. And once the frogs are paid for, he goes quietly back home, where his wife prepares the meal before the eyes of the whole family, as they watch her carefully and greedily. Nobody misses a movement. Young and old are eager to have a delicious meal. In Madagascar, you'll find another type of frog breeding. In a farm that sells all kinds of local animals, there are enclosures for the breeding of very small decorative frogs, prized by European or American collectors who don't want any more aquariums, but tanks with chameleons, lizards or frogs. This one is not more than two centimeters long. Here, as everywhere else, rubbish is a big problem. These blue reflections, which you can see on the hill, come from a refuse processing concern where worms are bred with compost. In this town, we're now working in six districts, and this project is an experimental one 
where we are carrying out these practical experiments. We put 500 half barrels there, as you can see. We have barrels painted red and other ones green. And we're trying to have the population put biodegradable waste into the green barrels and non-biodegradable waste into the red ones. It's not easy to do, but the people already understand that they must throw the waste into these barrels instead of getting rid of them anywhere else. We have collectors who go through the districts and pick up these barrels in carts or wheelbarrows. They bring them to this place where the waste is sorted. The non-biodegradable waste is put aside and carried to a site specially reserved for that purpose. With the biodegradable one, we make heaps. We have one heap a week. Turn these heaps over once a week. We have to water them too, because fermentation is made easier this way. After three or four months, we get a product we call compost. This is an excellent ecological fertilizer for farmers. Thanks to this compost, plenty of excellent vegetables can be grown. But other people take care of gathering compost worms. We also call them dung worms. They're very interesting because they can be fed to poultry, pigs or fish. Thus, the hygiene of the town, as well as production, can benefit. In tropical zones, ant hills are part of the landscape, and using so-called termitaries is not a new thing. In fact, a countless number of these insects can be seen when an active ant hill is opened. It's interesting to know that they can be bred, as here in this earthenware pot, by filling the pot with paper, straw and earth only a few days before. The pot is later invaded by termites. Hens learn to eat them very quickly, and they are an excellent source of protein for chicks. In the village and in the forest, people sometimes gather termites without really breeding them. While termites can be gathered through the old technique of using a broom before plunging them into a bowl and cooking them. These two are a pleasant source of food. However, we cannot call this breeding. Also in Madagascar, the destruction of termitaries can be avoided by bringing blocks of them to a farm, where they could be received and paid for. These blocks, when shaken free, will feed animals such as frogs and